Hi FlossTube, what's up? I don't have a whole lot to talk about today. I'm kind of um, probably condensing a few things into this video. Um, I got some fabric. I had actually shot this video the other day um, knowing some fabric was coming, but it arrived today. So I am reshooting it, including the new fabric. <laughs> so if I talk about something and I'm like, did I tell you that already? I'm probably thinking of the previous video that I um, recorded. So if there's any confusion, just drop me a comment and I'll clarify. But um, for the most part this video, I'm going to go over some fabric that I've gotten. Uh, I got my fabrics by Stephanie order. I also grabbed a couple more pieces off eBay and I've made some decisions on some design. So that's super fun. And then I thought I'd go over my Mirabila collection. I don't have a whole lot. Um, I mostly focus on the mermaids and stuff, but kind of like how I did my Teresa Wensler video, I thought I'd do a Mirabila video so yeah but first let's go over the fabric so um the one piece this was a one-off um do you guys remember i'll show it to you again real quick uh this piece that i had gotten and i'm thinking about it for queen mermaid it's kind of a it's one of them colors that me holding it up to you it doesn't it looks kind of muted but in person like there's purples there's aquas there's yellows maybe slight pinks like there's a lot of color in it but it's not super obvious on camera um but i'm thinking about it for queen mermaid not fully decided just for a quick uh reference this gal thinking about it um the only thing i'm really torn about is i'm opalescent or not and this is not an opalescent so but um just to show you guys here's the manufacturer or the the gal that does them if you guys want to freeze frame that, um, it's uh, Oxana Lopatina. Hope I said that right. Um, I like her stuff and she ships really fast, so that's pretty cool. So I had gotten this piece and had that in mind for the Queen Mermaid, and then I got this off eBay. I think it was eBay, yeah. And it's funny because it jogged my memory, it's very similar to this piece that I have on Renaissance Mermaid. And I had forgotten it, so now I realize it was this gal that did this piece. So if you were liking that color, then go look at this gal. She doesn't name her fabrics. It's not like there's a name you can look for for the fabric color. This one is more purple than that. Um, I don't know if you can tell. This one's kind of darker purple. This one's more of a bluey tanzanite purple. And there's a little bit more obvious splotches of gray in this one. But what's funny is when I had opened this piece, you know, and you look at it, um, I put it down and I had my pile of Halloween stuff still laying out. And when I put it down, I kind of looked at it with this piece and I was like, ooh, I like that because there's no purple in here. So this will, I love how orange and purple contrast each other. So I thought this might be a nice thing for that. Another thing I considered this for, um, which I was talking about a Mirabila design last week and I couldn't remember the name of it. <laughs> and it, it, Halloween fairy, I think it was, not the limited edition one, um, but I was thinking about it for this fabric that I had gotten, this um, Harvest Bounty, is that what it is? Yeah, Harvest Bounty by Seraphim. So I had this piece and I had that in mind for it, but let me pull it out real quick. Um, that and I felt bad, you know, talking about this design, not showing it to you guys. So some of you guys might've been like, what the hell was she talking about? Well, it was this design. And this is a Nora Corbett, Corbett, Corbett or Corbet. I never know if it's fancy or not, but um, this is available on Hershner's as a PDF. I don't know if there is a hard copy. She's called the Halloween Fairy, but as you can see, she has no wings. And it's like, why isn't she Trick or Treat Fairy? Because it says Trick or Treat here. Well, when I was thinking about this fabric for her, yeah, I think it'd look cool, but I forgot how much orange was in this. So I don't think it's a good idea. I mean, I could place it carefully to where like the pumpkins maybe fall on some of the purple or something, but I'm not about that life right now. So <laughs> that, and there's plenty of other things that I want to do with this, but I kind of thought she might look good on this too, you know, cause I don't think, I don't think there's purple in this. There's a lot of like browns and grays and like maybe some antique violets, you know, that aren't very purpley, but I think this would look cool here and I think it would make the pumpkins pop. Also, there's some really cool spiderweb designs on this one and I think that would look really cool on a darker fabric. So, I don't know. I don't know if I have enough fabric to do both those designs on this, but something to think about. So this was the piece that I had got and then today, 
I got my Fabrics by Stephanie design, or fabric, Fabrics by Stephanie order. And I only got two pieces, but they were big slash significant pieces to me. So the first piece that I'm going to show you, I had it in mind when I ordered it for potential for um, Amphitrite, which I will show you her, just to jog your memory, this gal, Queen Goddess of the Sea by Bella Filipina. And I like the fabric. It doesn't quite look the way I thought it was going to. Um, you know how that goes, and I have my whole rant video about that. But not, I'm not disappointed with it. Um, it's still close to what I thought it was going to be. Um, lots of blues and greens and yellows and little bits of, like, melon colors. Um, but I don't know if I told you when I ordered this fabric, I had a backup design in mind for it. And... I will show you guys which one I'm thinking. This gal, Gaia, the Earth Goddess. And I like this side of the fabric. It's kind of, um, you can kind of see all the play of colors. You know, there's lots of pinks and reds and blues. And this is Stardust, by the way. Sorry if I didn't mention that. And it's this opalescent, <coughs> excuse me. And this is, I don't have coronavirus, I swear. Um, and this is a um, fat half. So a big piece. So, um, you know, I pretty much have two sides to pick one. This one's mostly green. This one's got more of the like melons and just a, a good overall mix of the colors. So this is the side that I like. I will have to be careful about things blending in here because she's very green and yellow. But I did know that I kind of wanted her on a greeny color because she's the earth goddess, you know, and like, come on, green, earth. Just kind of makes sense that way. So I was fancying that, but I still don't have any floss or metallics or beads or anything. So I could buy all that, throw them on this fabric and decide I don't like it. But I like this fabric and I think I can do something cool with it. So that was the big order. Now, this other piece that I ordered, I ordered it because every time I'm on Stephanie's site and I'm looking at her fabric, this one catches my eye. And when I opened it up, it was like, ding, ding, ding. That's what was in your mind's eye for Amphitrite. And this is Kaleidoscope with a K. And I don't know if it's showing up, but it's like a predominantly blue-green, but it's got like a rainbowy mix, which is exactly kind of what I was thinking for Amphitrite. And I love this color. I am going to order another piece, a bigger piece that's opalescent because I like it so much. I know, and I have a lot of ideas for this one. Like there's several pieces I could use on this one. So this will definitely get used. So I'm glad I ordered it. I'm just mad I didn't order a bigger piece. I, I remember I was thinking like, oh, maybe if this piece is what you want, maybe you should order it in a fat half and opalescence. But I was like, I just need to know what the color looks like. I might be disappointed, you know, and I don't want to have a huge piece of fabric and be disappointed, you know. So now that I know I love it, I can order a bigger piece and hopefully it's still similar. <laughs> but I will say, this is not what I'm gonna use for Amphitrite because I pulled this out and a few of my other potential fabrics and did a floss toss. I didn't even bother doing the floss toss with this piece because it's too light. Like I want something a little darker for her um, just because I felt like that was too light. So basically I did the floss toss for Amphitrite with this and I don't know if it's going to come across, but her colors are very bright and vivid. And I've got my box of floss. I can show it to you, but I don't know if it'll come across on camera because everything's going to get washed out. But let's try. Let's try. See if it shows up. But when I did the floss toss, these colors are so vivid and bright. I don't know if you can tell. I know it's through like, you know, a plastic case. But when I put them on this kind of muted fabric, it just kind of like flattened the colors a little bit. And I was just kind of like, mm, okay. So I pulled out another piece, which you guys have already seen. This is from Under the Sea Fabrics, Calypso's K. And I told you it was potential, but I never did the floss toss because I knew I was waiting on other fabric. So, this color is much more vivid than the last color. 
And when I do the floss toss with it, the colors are in harmony. So basically without further ado, this is the piece of fabric I am going to use for Queen Amphitrite. <laughs> so it's funny, I had to order fabric to decide that fabric I already have is suitable <laughs> for a design, but I needed to know. And I did kind of in my mind's eye want a piece that was predominantly blue, but had like, you know, some yellows and some reds and some other like colors in the background. I didn't want it to just be blue, you know, but seeing that this is in my mind's eye, what the perfect fabric would have been. Like when I started thinking in my head, what, what perfect fabric would it be? It was this. And I still didn't like it with the floss toss. So, but I still like it, you know, so don't take that the wrong way. But this piece, I think the colors are vivid enough that and it's big enough, it's opalescent, it is perfect. This is the actual piece I can use. It's huge because I have the Queen Infantry, she'd be thick. So here it is. And this is the piece I'm gonna be using. Now I have to um, play with the whole, which way am I gonna orient the fabric? Where do I want the colors to land? Which side of the fabric is the pattern more vivid? Because I, I always like the pattern to be a little bit more vivid. So I'm gonna be, flip flopping this and ironing it for a while until I get it right. But I'm just so happy to finally have the fabric sorted for that piece. You know, that's been a big thing. I've been wanting to start her and I've been stalled in fabric limbo. So I'm glad that I finally have that figured out. And I'm very happy with this piece, you know, because this is going to be a big design. So I really wanted the fabric to be cool. I didn't want it to just be like one monotone color. She's got a lot of colors, so I wanted to pick up on some of those. So I am very happy that I already have the fabric for her. So now I need to get the bars for the scroll frames um, and then I can start. So that's exciting. So I think that was worth doing a video alone, but I also know that it would be a short video. Um, so there's a few other things I was gonna go over. And um, one is, let me show you this gal. I did not get much done since the last time I showed her to you. I think all I did was finish the back stitching of the skin. Other than I'm going to be tweaking some things and I'll show you. So I do love how this arm has turned out. She's got a beautiful hand there. So what the hell's wrong with that hand? <laughs> like, I, I don't know if you guys see it, but like it looks like she's got a really fat middle finger. So I have gone through on the chart and I have sketched out where I would add some more back stitching to create, you know, another finger up here for her. And I like how that looks. So I'll be doing that. I also am going to, where is it at? Okay. So this arm here, as you see, some of the over one gets kind of skippy. So I'm going to go through here and I'm going to smooth that out a little bit just to contour it a little bit better. So I'm not completely done with the over one, but you know, practically done. I'm giving myself a break though and I started doing some hair because I was so sick of over one. Like I didn't want to do it no more, don't make me. <laughs> so, which sucks because my side project is almost 100% over one. But you know, I gotta get started on that. So, there's that. She's coming along nicely, I'm happy with her. I haven't got much done because you know, I've got the bird. I'm planning on getting new floors in my house. So I've been working a lot to save money for the floors. I've been cleaning, rearranging, um, removing just clutter, you know, to prepare for putting the floors in. I'm planning on doing them myself. Who knows what kind of a disaster that's gonna be, but let's find out. <laughs> so, but anyway, it's been kind of busy, so I haven't got a lot of tissue stuff done. So I'm sorry I don't have much to show you other than, yay, I got some fabric, um, which I still have more coming, but who knows when that's gonna be. So, Let's go ahead and pick through my Mirabella designs. Like I said, I don't have a ton. I mostly focus on the mermaids um, just because I have it out already. Let's count this one. Got the queen mermaid. I love her. I think she's beautiful. Um, I think she was one of the first corseted mermaids to come out. And this will be a common theme you'll hear from me. I was kind of anti-corseted mermaid for a while for a few reasons. One, who wants to swim in a corset? Not me. Second, there was this big thing where all of a sudden it seemed like it was taboo to show mermaids exposing their bellies or having anything that looked like boobs, you know, like, I don't know. It just, I didn't like how it made it seem like feminine body parts are taboo. You know, I was like, what's wrong with it? Why are we covering it up? Like, I don't know. I didn't get it. So I kind of didn't like the corset thing and I had kind of thought of converting her, but she's got kind of a 
I like her corset. It looks kind of cool. It's very pretty and I love it's got this kind of a crosshatch design with the um, metallics. So while I don't love the corseted mermaid look, I like it on her. And I think she was one of the first ones. She might have started the whole trend, but who knows. Um, I will count this one. Renaissance mermaid. She's on the bars. Work in progress. So let's count her for that. Um, then let's get into the box of Mira. And there's a little bit of other things in here other than Mira, but I'll show this one again real quick. Halloween fairy. I do want to get the actual like Halloween fairy um, at some point. Um, I've always waffled on her because she's got kind of a flipper for a hand. And I don't like those skipped details. It's like, we know you can do gorgeous hands, you know, but... I guess time's an issue so but I, I just prefer the more fully finished designs you know I'm I'm willing to put the time in to make them look more realistic as realistic as cross stitch can look you know versus getting something done quick just to have it on the wall so this is Mediterranean Mermaid and I plan on framing her horizontally oriented because I like how that looks this just looks a little bit too like her hair doesn't seem like it's going the right way to me speaking of her hair I'm gonna make her blonde um, because there are no blonde Mirabella mermaids. You can argue there's a few auburns, but mm, not that, that's a stretch. I was going to change her chartreuse green tail, but now I've decided that I kind of like it. I've seen enough pictures of it done. It's mostly beads, and beads uh, a lot of times get a pass for me, you know, because they add a different element. I do have the bead pack for her, and I'll probably be doing her on a vivid turquoise colored fabric that I'm thinking. I've showed it to you guys before. It's from um, um, Ship's Manor. Why that? Well, I blanked on that for a minute. I'm not sure. Lilith the Labrador. I really like this. She's newer. Probably the newest mermaid. I like her weird skin tone. I like her weird hair colors. Um, I like her tail, even though it looks a little thick in points to me. The thing that kind of bothers me a little bit is she is kind of flat chested. I kind of would like to see her a little more voluptuous up top, you know, because if you remo removed her, whatever those are, cups, bra, whatever, uh, she would definitely be a carpenter girl, which nothing wrong with being a carpenter girl. I mean, she can be a carpenter girl mermaid, but I just, it just seems very flat to me. Like, I, I feel like she needs more dimension. It's just so flat, you know, so I'm like, what's that? And like I said before, why do we kind of constantly try to cover up female parts on mermaids when it's like they're half female. Um, South Seas Mermaid. This one I didn't like when it first came out, partially because of the corset, partially because of the pink, partially because she has a J shape in her tail. But the longer I look at stitched pieces of her, the more I like her. And the reason I didn't like the J shape was because it looked very static to me. But looking at finished pieces, you know, her hair is moving, the background's moving. So it's just kind of like she's chilling. You know more so than she's static so and there's some cool beads with her and I actually don't think I'm gonna change anything on her I do like the idea of doing her on a fabric that's over dyed and has some warm colors in the background because you know South Seas that's pretty warm waters there so this is the siren and the shipwreck I like her and she's one of the few with chartreuse green that I actually like it we have a joiner. Hi, baby. How you doing? I knew she'd probably do this. Just don't poop on me, please. Um, South Shiren and Shipwreck. So I don't think I'm going to change anything on her. I also don't know what fabric I'm going to do. I love her hair, though. I think she's got really pretty flowy hair. Let me switch you, babe. There we go. Go, baby. Hi. Thank you for joining. There's an oldie. Deepest love. Got her kitted up still waiting on my picture this plus fabric i am conflicted on whether i should do her on dark or light colored fabric because she's got that gauzy um thing you know shawl or whatever and i feel like if i do her on a light fabric the effect of that's going to be a little bit lost so and I, I also worry about doing her on like an over dye because of that reason so and i also don't know if i want to do her on opalescent so i'm very conflicted about her fabric um she's probably one of the lightest hair um mermaids of Mirabila, bordering on Auburn. Okay, this one, Mermaids of the Deep Blue. I like this pair. I think they're very pretty, of course. They're corseted again. 
and the one that's on this side is kind of like she's kind of straight up and down which seems kind of strange anatomically to me but you know of course it's do do that so i guess that makes sense i love their hair i don't like the chartreuse green and i actually have a conversion in progress on this that went wrong because the floss toss looked really pretty but once i got colors laid down <laughs> i had plotted it wrong because i was kind of going for like purples with fiery red colors, but I mixed in orange and yellows and the yellows were predominant. So I was not liking the yellow and purple combination. I did not finish it either. So maybe it would look better once I finished things, but it kind of got to the point where I'm just like, I'm not liking this. So I don't know what I want to redo it as. I've seen so many different versions of this. I'm not sure if I want to go purple or what I want to do. So that one will sit for a little while. This one is Aphrodite mermaid which is funny because I always thought Renaissance mermaid looks more like classic Aphrodite the only thing Aphrodite is the clamshell she's kind of floating out of I guess I do love her tail pattern I like that she kind of looks like a lionfish I am kind of not sure about her hair she's giving me Bride of Frankenstein vibes and I don't know I'm just not sure if I'm with it that and her her hips look very square to me like, I'd probably curve out her hips a little bit more just because it looked very boxy to me. So, and then um, this is Waiting for Ships. She was my favorite when I first started doing Mirabilla. She was my first on linen, first using heavy braids, first using beads. Um, so, yeah, she was, she's sentimental to me. That and I'm redoing her over, um, I'm, I made her purple and I gave her strawberry blonde hair. Um, don't have much done at all, nothing worth sharing, and it's been sitting for like over a decade. So, um, I also have decided I don't like the colors I did for her hair because she's gonna look orange, I think. So, I'm gonna play with that a little bit, but it's probably not gonna be for a while. You know, she's hanging in my bathroom finished as is, anyways. But she was she was my favorite when they came out. But the only thing that bothers me about her, which I sometimes think this is why they go for the corsets, she has a belly but no belly button. <laughs> so I've always wanted to go back in and give her a belly button because I'm like, girl, where, where's your belly button? Free the navel. <laughs> this one is the Enchanted Mermaid and I've always thought this one should be the Queen Mermaid because she has that queen posture like the seasons, that kind of snooty, I'm better than all you lowly, you know, civilians kind of look to her. So I always thought she should be the Queen Mermaid. I do like her. I like her hair. I think it's pretty. Uh, I like her pose. I like her tail. I'm conflicted on her colors, though. Where are you going? You cannot get in there. Come here, silly girl. You are so pretty. Yes, you're such a pretty girl. Yes. Can you go sit on your perch for a little bit? I need both my hands. I need both my hands. And she said no. <laughs> She wants to stay with mama. How about you come up here? Just don't poop on me, okay? I just need my hands. I just need my hands. Thank you. I was filming this earlier and she flew at the camera trying to land at it and knocked it over. And I'm not about editing and doing cuts. She found her way to my hand again. <laughs> and so I started all over again. It's all your fault. You did it, silly bird. Yes, baby. She has this obsession with my phone for some reason. Like, oh, and Fun fact, con your tongues work on iPhones. She hung up on my friend the other day because she saw the red hang up button and she went over and bleh, and you hung up on my friend with your tongue. So that's a thing you guys know now. Anyways, back to the mermaids. This is Emerald Mermaid. This one I'm conflicted on. Uh, she's, that does not look comfortable to swim in. Look at that. Like, Ever, I remember when she came out, people were like, oh my God, I love that you covered up her nudity and you put a corset on her. And I'm like, not me. Where's her belly? I want the belly. It looks more comfortable for her. That, and I'm like, she's chartreuse green again. You know, like, ugh. I'm not sure I'm with all the floral garlands either. Like, because flowers don't grow under the ocean. Sorry, they don't. Um, I do love her hair though. I think she's got really pretty hair. But I don't know what I'm going to do about that chartreuse green. Something's got to be done. Let me tell you. And I'm not in the mood to figure it out right now. So she'll stay in here for a little bit. Mermaid of the Pearls. She's behind me in her frame. You guys have, I have a video up showing her up close if you guys wanted to see her. Um, I am keeping this 
it's out of print and I fancy doing her like someone did a black pearl version once and I kind of fancy doing that because that looked cool. This one makes me scratch my head because clearly at one point I was kidding it up and I did this before I went on my hiatus. So clearly I was kidding this up at one point, but I don't really like her that much. I think I saw someone's close up and there's like this, um, this fish up in the corner there. And I thought that fish looked really cool. And I was like, Ooh, I'm going to kit that up. But again, chartreuse green. She's not really wearing a corset because it seems like she's got an armload of stuff. But to me, I feel like her tail connects at a weird spot. It kind of, she kind of looks like Urkel, you know, like she's got high waters or her pants pulled up too high. Just seems a little off to me. That and her posture is a little bit atrocious. So, um, and then <laughs> that's all the mermaids I have. Some of them I don't have because I don't like them and I don't want to do them. Some I don't have like Black Blackbeard's Princess or Bluebeard's Princess. I like that one. I just don't have it yet. Um, the smaller um, mermaids are the ones that I don't really care for. Um, like I said, I'll, I'd rather take the time and flesh out all the fancy details and have it looking good than have a quick finish mermaid. That not like the colors of a lot of them. So... In between my non-mermaid mirrors, I have her mother. <laughs> so some lavender and lace and some butternut road. This is the fairy grandmother. I like her. It's funny too, because I remember when I was younger, I didn't care for her too much, but now that I'm getting a little bit older and wiser, I'm like, you know, I can appreciate the fairy grandmother now. So I will do her someday. I think she's got cool colors. This is the Earth Dancer. And I keep meaning to buy the suede bits for her because I'm always kind of paranoid. Like, what if these fibers go like out of stock and now what are you gonna do? <laughs> so um, I do have the spirit dancer too and I'm actually kidding it up. That's the one, she's got a bird. So, um, and I bought the suede for that piece. So I'd I, I'll would i be doing that one first. I actually have not done any of these designs yet, just cause she does so many angels and like wedding gown things that aren't really my speed. But speaking of the angels, I have this one, Angel of the Sea. Now I'm not Christian or anything, so I'm not really into angels, but I do think she's pretty and I think the wings look cool. The only thing that kind of confuses me is what's with the baby, you know, like, I don't know, like, I, you didn't rescue a baby from the ocean like I don't know it just doesn't make sense to me a little bit because you know there's the guardian angel and the angel of mercy and I get those ones but the angel of the sea I'm like what's a baby gotta do with it though I do appreciate that she's blonde because I've stolen her hair colors for one of those mermaids that I'm converting to blonde <laughs> so that and I love like the sea creatures at the bottom and the swirls you know so if if I do an angel it'll probably do this one I do have to admit I like some of her other angels. Some She's got a really good eye for like flow for like ribbons and stuff like that. So I will probably do some more of those. Bye baby. Sometimes you just need some birdie kisses. Okay. So then I've got this one and this one I've had forever and I've been meaning to do it forever. It's the Midsummer Night's Fairy. I've always loved her kind of see-through wings. But that's the problem with this design too, because now I don't know what kind of fabric I want to do her on. You know, because if I do her on an over dye, I think the colors will show through. Because I'm thinking it's a half cross metallic that makes it transparent. I'm not sure. I could be wrong. It also does bother me that she's on like kind of a, a floating twig, you know. So I don't know what else I would do there though. So I don't know that I'm going to change anything, but I don't know what fabric I want to do her on. This one kind of makes me chuckle a little bit. This is the Winter Queen. And the reason I have this design, winter is my least favorite season, but this design uses a lot of whisper and I think whisper's fun. <laughs> that, and I like that, you know, she's the Winter Queen and she's got the whisper that looks like fur. I love designs that incorporate different textures like beads and braids and things like that. So whisper, you know, I like it. So I have her that. And, <clears throat> excuse me autumn is my favorite season followed quickly by summer i like the colors in the autumn queen but i don't like her headgear like it looks a little bit too um <clears throat> princess leia -y to me but not as cool as princess leia if that makes any sense <laughs> this one's out of print this is the dreamer I actually think this one should be called Sleeping Beauty. I think she's cooler than Sleeping Beauty. I love the royal colors in her. 
I hate that fabric though. And I'm not sure I'm with the scrolly stuff at the top. So, but I don't know when I'll do this one. Don't know what kind of fabric I want. Then I've got this one. I thought this was fun. Shakespeare's fairies. So yeah, just, just fun. And I like the lanterns that they have. That fabric is blah. So never on that fabric. I don't know what I'll do it on. I'll have to floss toss it though. This one's out of print and I actually bought it um, this year, I think sometime, or maybe last year. Um, it can go kind of pricey cause it's out of print, but I nabbed it on eBay um, for like 20 bucks or something. No one countered me. I just got lucky. And this one, like when I saw that it was out of print, I was bummed because I'd always kind of liked it. Cause I love her wing, that little green wing that she's got. So I don't know, it's just a cool design, I think. So that, and I don't know, something something about the yellow I really liked. Strange, I'm not a big yellow person, but there you go. Okay, so then I've got Princess Eliana. I like her, not much into the dresses, but I love the wild colors in this one. So I just, just thought it looked like fun. So, and here's the fabric that I'll be using for her. It's Weeks Dye Works in Lilac. Then I've got Cathedral Woods Goddess. Woo! -hoo. I like this one. I think she's really cool. And the, the pictures I've seen of this one, it's gorgeous. So I've got the beads, and that's all I've got. <laughs> but I do think maybe this fabric might be cool for her. You know, because she's got some turquoise in her. But then, you know, let's do the beads. There's all these like coppers, you know, and teals. I just think that might look cool on this fabric, you know? I don't know. Have to do a floss toss. Have to get my, my floss and my silks. So yeah, that's all my Mirabilas. Um, I think, I don't think I have any others scrolled away anywhere. Um, I think I've shown you most of them. There are still some I'm going to get. Obviously, my collection is not very big. I wouldn't even really call it a collection, you know. Um, I do love the mermaid designs, but I have to like the mermaid design to buy them. I'm not just going to buy it because it's a mermaid. So, hi, baby. Isn't she pretty? She's such a pretty girl. Yes. Natiri. She's obsessed with, like, the screen on my camera. Like, she's looking at it right now. I better turn her away or she's going to fly there and knock you over and I'm going to have to do this all over again. She's a good girl. But anyways, um, I know I don't have as many mirrors as other people, but you know, that's what I got. And I thought it would make this video just a little bit longer. You're talking over me, baby. She doesn't make a lot of noise, but sometimes if you're talking, she starts chattering. Yes, don't you, don't you. It's funny. <laughs> she sounds like she's squabbling with you. But anyways, thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.